Hello, everyone. Uh, how are you doing? I hope all of you are well. And uh, we are in for an exciting Sunday. Uh, this was a session which I had wanted to take for a long time back. And uh, now I decided that this is high time that we could focus more on reading. Now more and more of you are getting serious with your reading assignments. You want to read well, you want to do a good job of reading. And newspaper reading is truly something that can enhance your reading skills uh, beyond what you may think. Why I feel that newspaper reading is a double-edged weapon? It is because in a newspaper, what the article says, it has two types of headings. One type of heading is this heading. This heading is something which gives you the, you know, the crux of what the news is about and a highlight feature of the news. And it comes in with another heading, which is this. This determines the central theme of the passage. So a theory on central theme, how to find out main idea, how to find out uh, the central idea of the passage. If I am a regular newspaper reader, I will automatically understand what central theme is because of the way an, an article in a newspaper is structured. And a lot can be learned unknowingly by reading this article. So this and more on today's session on how to read a newspaper. Now, this session will have two types of information for you. One is how to read a newspaper generally, how to read a newspaper, what to skip, where do I not have to go and read the article inside, where do I can, where do I just read the headline and move on. And the second, the more focused area of today's lecture will be on how to read a newspaper and find out what the newspaper is saying or the article is saying. This is something which will focus in terms of test prep. This is something which we will focus on uh, for building up your reading comprehension skills. And we can do one or two articles together and try to uh, find out the central idea of the uh, passage, focus on what keywords, how to read faster, how to read slower, where can I skip portions, where can I focus more, which keywords will help me determine what to read, what to skip, all these questions I will try and answer with today's session and basis how you respond, we can add more sessions to this series, right? So it is relevant for all candidates writing exam whenever 21, 22, 23. So it's relevant for everyone. It's, a, it's, it's about reading. It's about reading and comprehension. So naturally it is relevant for all of you. So as I was telling you, uh, a newspaper is a very fine piece of weapon when it comes to your arsenal of reading. When it comes to your arsenal of word building. I could do another session on word building with newspaper, but not today, because today we will focus only on reading. So as I was telling you, the two types, so there is, this is called the topical sentence. This is what tells you what the passage is going to talk about. And the smaller topical sentence here tells you the central theme, not just what the passage is going to talk about, but exactly what is the conclusion of the author and the main idea of the author. Now, when we give you RCs in your mocks and when we give you RCs in your question papers, we eliminate these two parts and we just give you this article. And the central idea option is made from this heading here. So this is how it is. We eliminate the, sub, uh, the topic sentence. We eliminate the subtopic sentence, the one below the topic sentence. And then we give you these artic this article portion here. And when we make the uh, options for the central theme for you, 
then this is the option that is correct. So imagine if every day of your life, you are reading articles and you get the benefit of this, then your job should be, once you have read it, in your mind, you should say, yes, this is the central theme. This is the central theme that I have also understood. And this is the central theme. And now backwards, you have to focus on, okay, am I reaching this central theme? So this, of course, we will do with the editorial page. So this is what is the central idea. And this is what you have to learn to determine without reading it. So let's come to first basics that I have got the newspaper in front of me today. And I'm going to decide which portions I'm going to read. So I'll start with what I do. I've got the newspaper and uh, I, I read the news that is given before me. I look at this currency smuggled at behest of Kerala CM. That means this is a follow-up news. That means earlier some news must have come talking about some people who have smuggled currency. Now, if I am reading a newspaper daily, I will look at this headline and if I know that there is something that is going on, a racket which is going on, I will see that this is a new development in the racket, right? This is like a new development in the racket. This and this is enough for me to know that, okay, in the racket, the new development is the involvement of the chief minister. So I may choose not to go inside and read it, but even if I choose to enter this article and read this article, I am going to quickly scan it and actually come to a line. Uh, let me try and increase the size of this article. Okay. Now I think everyone can read this. So I'm going to come and read the part where I will quickly scan all this. This I registered a case of this, this, this. These are very basic details, facts. Fine, I'm going to go over it very, very quickly. Then again, facts, facts, facts. And then I realized that the actual news of this will be on page eight. So this should take about a few seconds because all we have to do is quickly skim the facts, get whatever details that I need to take. Now, then in this article, I realized that I am not looking at, one minute, let me just get this. Uh, so when I read this article, I realize, okay, this is basically a fact-based article, a new development has come in on this part of the article. And I move on. This takes about two, three minutes, not more. Okay, let me just try and get this bigger. Now I come to this article here. SC says new rules to regulate OTT. Now how many of you know what OTT is? So I'm going sideways. Huh? No, I don't want to write. I just want to make it bigger. Sideways. Okay, first tell me, can you all read this uh, article here? Great. So, do you all know what OTT is? Yes, I'm getting lots of answers over the top. Great. Now, when I read this, again, I realize that yes, here in OTT platforms, I've read this news about Supreme Court. There is this ongoing uh, 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 debate on this series that came in Tandav, the web series, right? So I'm going to uh, read something ex uh, extra over here. Now, 
there are two things that I notice in this article. From the headline, the headline is very nice. I see lack teeth, OTT platforms lack teeth. So there's an idiomatic usage that I see here. What is the meaning of lack teeth? Yes, they are not strong enough. They are not strong enough. So again, this headline is revelatory. That means this headline tells me what the news article is going to contain. Now, I have to decide whether I want to read this further. So let's assume that I'm going to read this further and I come to the fine details of why the SC feels that all these OTT platforms lack T. So OTT platforms means your uh, web series, media, uh, the media that is available on the web, that is the OTT platforms. <clears throat> so let me come to this article in detail and I start reading. Yes, can you all see the screen and read the article? Yes, is the screen visible now? So I start reading this. I'm going to focus on reading of this article. The Supreme Court on Friday, so I'm reading, set the government's new rules to regulate. So all this is just a summary of the headline, right until the end, right? Till the comma, and then I see even as it. So if you notice, there are two headlines, OTT platforms lack teeth and the Amazon web series gets a relief from the Supreme Court, right? So the first part is the headline and the second part is joined by this transition word, even as it. Now, whichever article we are going to read, we are going to now pause at these transition words. So today we will learn to underline and pause at these transition words and see their efficacy in reading. Now, even as it suggests that a opposite action has taken place, that an opposite action has taken place. So while the Supreme Court is angry or whatever, it is upset or it says that boss, you are not doing enough with the OTT platforms. In fact, it even called them these platforms are showing pornographic material. It gave relief to Tandav, which was the web series, which was in the news for certain charges against being anti-India and anti-cultural, etc. So two things which are opposite to each other happen. How do I know they are opposite to each other? Because of the word, even as it. That means all my reading is dependent on these transition words. And while I'm scan, scanning it, now this paragraph talks about guidelines. There is, so I'm quickly reading this. I'm skipping all the long names, the acronyms. I skip it. I understand what it is. And there is no provision for punishment. So this is all explaining the meaning of lax teeth, right? Then Mr. Mehta agreed on something. So I know that this news article is, the tone is objective, it is the first page. This is where I expect to find only fact-based news. So and so said this, so and so said this. So supposing this is the type of article I get for my reading, if this is the type of an article that I get in my examination, what am I going to do? I'm probably just going to skim it. I will skim to find out these transition words. So this, the first transition word that we noticed today is even as it, even as it, it shows two opposite things happened simultaneously. And then I'm going to read quickly. I see that it is an objective piece of writing. It is only giving me uh, details. So I skim, skim. If I have been, if I'm asked something about Ashok Bhushan, just as Ashok Bhushan, I'm going to just come back and look at it. If I'm asked about Mr. Mehta, next paragraph says Mr. Mehta agreed. That means now I'm going to be told what Mr. Mehta's arguments were. I'm going to leave it. I'll just go to the questions, come back, skim it, and mark my answers. 
right no problem there now we will take this learning to a bigger piece of news article and then see the result of these transition words and within a bigger piece of news article where there is no objective news where the article probably has some deep analysis or some opinion now how i'm going to deal with them right so let me look at some other pages so i'm turning to page 5 It's not going down. Okay, so I'm on page five now. and then i see an interview so let me bring you all to this interview so interview questions had come once in my knowledge in the exam that i gave which was the cat paper an interview had come and uh, an, uh, that's how it was given sometimes an interview is of the nature of question and answer as you can see here there is a question followed by an answer that was the type of an interview which was there in the cat exam that i wrote a uh, paper pen based test when it was a paper pen based test after that i haven't seen an interview so far except for the fact that interviews can also come in a non interview formatted writing where the author writes the interview in an indirect voice uh, in in indirect speech right now indirect speech means where there is no direct question and answer format the author writes the summary of having spoken to some person these type of interviews you will see a lot in uh, cultural magazines in fact even in uh, film magazines like film fair where they cover a story of a person right now <clears throat> in that direct questions may not be written you are just told that so and so uh, you met so and so the person seemed very relaxed uh, when asked so there the question will be within the writing within the narrative and it will say when asked about their fitness secret the star had to say so there's no direct question do you understand what i mean by reported speech so there's no direct question there is a reported speech when asked about uh how they keep their fitness reg regime this is what the star had to say so this of course is a direct interview as i said in aptitude testing i have seen it only once uh not seen it in undergraduate exams clat and all but in direct questions in in an indirect interview format can be asked where the person writes in reported speech gives the gist of the interview and within the narrative only questions are framed and replies are given and all of that is written by the author so there you are not going to see answers in first person that brings me to an example of first person writing first person writing we will see on the editorial page so if i can quickly take you to the editorial page so that editorial page would be page 6 and we come to some articles here here we may find first person writing that would mean that the author is extremely opinionated in their writing usually first person writing is given by celebrity writers and uh, uh, and and uh, 
you know, uh, people who are either experts in that area. Now, in first person writing, usually you will have opinionated articles only, mostly what the author feels about a certain issue. And this will be interspersed with the author's experience. In one of our CLAT mocks, we had given a first person writing uh, a piece written by AI, artificial intelligence. And many of you had issues where you felt, uh, you know, that two paragraphs did not show that AI was writing it. And in the last paragraph, the, the, the passage used the word I. So that is all right. The moment I see I, the moment I see an I, automatically it becomes first person writing, even if it is in the last line of the passage. The word I means artificial, uh, the word I means first person. That means before that, even if I is not used, the views are the authors and the author is I. So please remember that. So let's see, I don't think, uh, there is any first person writing in any of these two articles, which I would like to take with you today. But we will definitely see uh, opinion on this page. It's the editorial page. And because we will see opinion, we would like to understand what type of opinion is given over here, right? So, uh, let's come to this article on cybersecurity. Can you read this article, uh, see this article on cybersecurity? So first let's focus on the headline of this article, patching the gap in India's cyber security. The headline is very revelatory. That means this, passage is most likely to offer suggestions on how to patch the gaps in India's cybersecurity. So this will be what type of writing? It will be a prescriptive article. The author is likely to share views on what the gaps are. So there will be an analysis, fault finding, and the author is likely to share the suggestions and advice. This type of article will be different from an article which is written by a cynic. A cynic means a person who uh, doesn't have hope, finds faults. So those articles will probably be just criticizing, comparing with others, criticizing, may not offer any suggestions. But such an article is likely to offer suggestions because there is a very positive subtopical sentence which says doctrinal clarity and institutional coherence are essential for a robust. That means this article is offering more of help rather than criticizing any gaps. But gaps will be given in order to share why the suggestions should be inculcated. So through the headlines, this is what I should feel that this is what I'm likely to read inside the article. And as I said, if this article is given to you as the form as a form of a passage, these will be removed, and you yourself, after reading, have to reach these conclusions. So, what you are doing now is by reading newspapers, you are familiarizing your mind and your reading system that when this type of article is written, this is what the central theme looks like in this article. If the central theme is more focused towards solutions, that means the article is written in a positive light. You know, so the author's mood, etc., is positive. It is, we won't say that the author is in a very critical mood or criticizing. A critical passage will only focus on what is good, what is bad. A complaining or a cynical piece of writing will focus on only the bad. So while a cynical piece of writing, a prescriptive piece of writing or suggestions or advice and a critical piece of writing, all of them will talk about gaps. All of them are going to talk about loopholes. One is positive, which is this passage. 
cynical passage will be mostly negative and a critical piece of writing will talk about both positives and negative and will have a largely neutral tone right but both or all three of such passages will have probably the same type of contents but their writing styles will be this and this is what you will have to learn to discern so let's start reading this so i start reading right i think it's pretty visible everyone so when i read this i start i see that the very first part is giving me it's starting with an example it this example is from the new york times and it continues to talk about what happened in maharashtra if i have already read about the maharashtra piece of news i should quickly move over this so reading speed is not just about how fast your eyes move on sentences but reading speed is also about how much a topic is familiar to you so there's a sensational report in the new york times etc etc i go uh, pretty fast so this is the sixth hindu this uh, this is the hindu newspaper from 63 as you can see the date if you have hindu at home you can also use the uh, uh, the hard copy newspaper so china appears to warn india so there is this news going on if i am very familiar with this my reading speed will be very fast so please remember reading speed is a direct attribute of familiarity that is why i always insist that the more you read the better your reading speed will be because if every day you're reading some newspapers if every day you're re reading two editorial articles you will become familiar with words you will become familiar with situations and if similar situations are given to you in your legal reasoning in your english in your critical reasoning you are likely to read fast so if we continue so this is about that chinese power outage where it was believed that china had done something if i move on the, now look at the keywords that i'm likely to see here so i quickly just go on and on and on quickly here i just have to skim these portions the moment i come across the moment i come across a transition word can you see this mean by i stop please remember even when i'm reading quickly i am stopping at transition words what transition words am i stopping at earlier i said even as i was stopping at even as right now i'm stopping at meanwhile meanwhile suggests that while we are going on reading about the state the union so meanwhile brings in a new perspective even as brings in an opposite outcome it's a contradictory word meanwhile brings in a new voice a new perspective a new author so i stop at meanwhile and i know what is the new voice the union power ministry <coughs> so meanwhile is giving a pause to the author the author believes that china did this or whoever did this and meanwhile is telling us that they have denied please remember all your questions are asked on these pauses this is where your questions are made in reading comprehension <coughs> fact based questions are made on facts that's okay but questions like what is true according to the passage what is not true according to the passage what can you infer all these are made from here these are the points where these are made so i have to stop at transition words so meanwhile is giving me a very critical point which is that the union power ministry has denied chinese rule so there are two voices now in this passage if the question says what is the author's belief the author's belief will be that china was involved that is why the author has written it because there is a cyber attack and the whole passage is on cyber attack and the author has opened the passage with the chinese involvement in the maharashtra power outage 
But if the question asks you the other voice, which is the union ministry, <coughs> they have denied it. And why has the author mentioned that the union ministry has denied it? The author has mentioned that the union ministry has denied it because uh, this is what the author is going to focus on now, how, the how in India we are not addressing the issue of cyber security, right? So we come read meanwhile, meanwhile, now we cannot say who is right since not enough information is present. The author shows this, right? And therein lies the rub. What is the meaning of this idiom? Even if I don't know the meaning of this idiom, I know that this idiom is related to how ministry is denying it, yet we know this must have happened. So therein lies the rub means this is the whole point. What is the whole point? That we are not getting enough uh, news about cybersecurity. Nobody in India is talking about it. Right? So then we move further. And the moment I see this small headline, now this editorial article is big, so there are further headlines given. These will not be given to you in your passages. So India has been attacked by suspected. So there is, there is fact, 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 fact. I can quickly skim it. What are the other attacks? Shadow network. I don't have to read this. These are other examples of where the attacks have been. Right? I don't have to read this. Okay, fine. Other attacks. If I have been asked, so what all can I see through skimming? So when I'm skimming this, there are other attacks. I see the year. I see the capital letters, coast, net. Okay, so this must be the other attack. I don't have to go into details. Skim, skim, skim. I see another capital letters, shadow network. Okay, it must be another attack. Skim, skim. Not relevant. Why not relevant? Because it is not talking about any central idea and I do not see any transition word here, any keyword here. That means these are only facts. I, if I need these facts through questions, I'm going to come back and look at them. How will I come back and scan them? Because if fact-based questions are asked, I can easily scan uh, names. Why can I easily scan names? Because names are given with capital letters. Ghost, net, shadow, network. I can easily scan it. Years, I can easily scan years. I don't have to read them because they're not adding a new point to the central idea. These are facts, they're only giving us details. Now I have to reach the central idea. Okay, why has the author given me these many examples? So I go up and I read further. <clears throat> Lots of uh, data has been released. Okay, then Sachin Pilot gave some speech on what happened. I get more names of Iran and Sakfly, another uh, uh, of these uh, attacks, another of these cyber attacks. Subsequent attacks at India's Tuxnet, all these names I go further down, right? No, not just uh, the attacks, but private uh, entities, including a firm that provided tech support to National Stock Exchange. So I'm getting lots and lots of examples. Okay, shadow network, etc. cetera. Uh, now I get, come to a point where I see another. So these transition words, whenever I notice one, the rule is I stop and read. If it is only adding to the facts, never mind. But if it is giving me a key point, I will attack, attach that key point to my central theme. So even when parliamentarians have raised serious questions, the government's responses have only been of hungry. So the author is continuing to raise the same question. Government has not responded properly to cyber attacks, even when parliamentarians have given the question. So the problem, this is the problem statement so far. With the help of these long list of attack examples, the author has come out with this problem. What is the problem? That government has not responded properly, right? 
and the author continues to make a point that lawmakers need to check the damage and in enable meaningful public discussions and crafting a robust response so problem plus solution why do we have to answer these questions because a robust response will help us curtail the damage done by cyber attacks so from even when i get this valid point from even when i get this valid point so how am i reading i am doing a series of skimming and reading what is the rule when i am pausing and reading the rule is whenever i come across these transition words how many of these transition words are there not many even as even when we got a repetition right meanwhile we already know of however but because therefore all these transition words so whenever i come across a transition word i pause and i read before that are facts and details i'm skimming i know these are facts and details they are not adding anything to the central idea so my understanding of the passage is not getting damaged these facts and details i can always look at when i have questions on those so i read 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 i come across another transition word called further further means what type of word is further further means a new reason is attached for the author's claim if the author is making a point that means here the author is making a valid argument as to why we need public discussions on cyber security and cyber attack further means the author is giving us a new reason so i read that new reason i came across another of these <coughs> on a side note another transition word oh oh sorry i was not on a side note on a side note means not relevant to the central theme i may choose to read it i may not choose to read it so on a side note just suggest that the author uh, if uh, is bringing up a smaller argument or a smaller detail to the larger discussion is this going to impact the central idea of the passage no it is not going to impact the central idea of the passage i may choose to read it i may choose to skip it and move to the central idea of the passage so we read 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 <coughs> we have got all these <coughs> examples and most of it is cyber attacks and how the government has responded then we come to the next heading please remember these headings will not be given to you india has made significant effort when it comes to cyber security we come down now it tells us important points of what all india has done so far do i have to read this i have understood from the first line that india has made a lot of progress in cyber security i have understood this now these are giving us details of what all has been done look at the transition word here among these now if you are doing para jumbles para jumbles whenever i have to find pairs right robert yeah. all right so uh, let me just yes this is what we were talking of so look at this among these among these is means that from a list of things that have been done you elaborate you start by elaborating the list you start the list by writing among these so among these will feature after the sentence which says a lot has been done so whenever i see among these i know that i can skip this part why should i skip this part because it is just going to give me the list so some transition words tell me that i have to read 
some transition words tell me that I can skip. So transition words like whereas, meanwhile, even as, even when, however, nevertheless, these tell me that I have to read because either they are contradicting a previous point or they are making a point. Among these tells me I can skip because it is only making a list. No point is being made. The point is made before it that a lot has happened. So now I know that a lot has been done. Among these tells me that a list is beginning. I can skip the list. If you understand this point, show of hands. <clears throat> Great. So among these, let's skip it. So these are NSA and look at this, NSA. Now I know that one of this is NSA. NSA is given as a, you know, an acronym. How difficult will it be to look for NSA if I have a question on it? Not difficult at all. So then you have National Information Board. So this whole list goes on and on and on and on. Then you have the computer response team, which does something. So now what, what will happen to this list? Some fact-based articles could be asked. So if a fact-based article is asked on the computer response team or NSA, I'll just have to come here, check my answer and move on. So now I'm again trying to look for a keyword, which will. <coughs> Uh, take me to the central point. Now look at this very important keyword. It's called the list ending keyword. Finally. Excellent. So I think some of you already noticed finally here. So this is the list ending keyword. So that means this list has ended here. Let me go to an important thing, which is the main idea. So I come to my next part. So that means long editorials for the purpose of reading have to be taken up like this for the purpose of finding information also. If you are doing GK through this, then you just have to skim and make notes quickly. So whether you're doing GK or reading, these, this list is something which you can skim and skip, note it down for GK, but otherwise for reading you can skip and you should try to understand the central theme by skipping the fact-based portions. It may not be easy initially, but if we have some discussions like this on a regular basis, I think you will be able to uh, do a good job of it. <coughs> now, I come to this very important keyword, this. Okay. Okay, let me take a red colored pen. <coughs> this. <coughs> this means the previous noun. Very important from Parajambal's perspective. Now, a noun in a previous sentence or a previous paragraph is mentioned with the word this. As far as Parajambal's is concerned, this is your deal break uh, maker. The moment you see a this sentence, you have to immediately look at other sentences and look for the noun. Will you remember this rule? The first sentences that I target are the this sentences. Very simple, I try to look for the noun before the this sentence. This is 80% of my approach in parachambles. The first thing that I do is look for antecedent nouns for these pronouns. So much so that now whenever I read, I include this as a transition word. I include it as a keyword in my reading. So that means my reading is built up of discipline. There's nothing special like an art or a talent that you are born with. It is the discipline. So why am I stopping if when I'm skimming fast? Why am I able to skim fast? Because I have trained my mind to stop at keywords. These keywords are the ones that will make me pause and move, make me move, read that part well, so that I'm skipping only the fact-based things and I'm reading the areas where the author is making a point. The facts do not contribute to the central theme, the points do. So now if I skipped this previous part, 
I look, stop at this. I read it. Now, if I feel that I should know what this, this is, what will I do? I'll just go back and read what this, this is. So I skipped it. I decided that I was not supposed to read it. And then I read this line with this. When I read this line with this, I see if I'm able to understand it. If I feel I'm not able to understand it, because I skipped the previous part, no problem. This, this will tell me that please go back and read it. So I'll go back and read it. I cannot predict. You cannot predict, okay, what I can only skim and then hope that I'm not missing out on an important point. Without reading, we cannot know it. I'll be more confident with skimming because I have more experience than you. You will be less confident. So these keywords will tell you. So I read this portion. This will tell me whether I have understood it without reading the previous paragraph. If I have understood it, great. I skipped the right part. But sometimes I may not have skipped the wrong part. Then again, this keyword will stop me and say, okay, go back and read it now. If this part is understood, show of hands. <clears throat> so I read it and maybe I decide that I don't have to. So I'm not focusing on uh, pausing and reading. I'm just trying to show you ways of increasing your reading acumen. So I'm reading it, overlapping responsibilities. So this paragraph is telling me that these institutions have overlapping responsibilities, lack of clear institutional boundaries. This needs to be clarified, etc. So I got a key point from here. One was that a lot of uh, institutions have been set up. The other part was the problem with these institutions. So first problem was government was not doing open discussion. Second problem is there is lack of institutional clarity. So fine, I don't have to go back and read details about the institutes. So this was the pronoun for all the institutes like the NSA and the CERT and all those acronyms we saw. And now it's telling me that there is a problem with the institutions. Why? Because there is no clarity or overlapping responsibilities. Right? So I've understood this. And then I come to India has also yet to clearly articulate a doctrine that holistically cap captures its approach. So this is the final part on approach. <coughs> I come down, I see another keyword while, while would suggest that what all is happening already, what all is happening already, India is engaging in targeted cyber attacks, but the problem that while suggests is this is there is the rules of engagement are not clear. So while again will bring show us two sides of the picture, one side of the picture is India is engaging, the other side of the picture is rules are unclear. So that means now I read further, this is unlike India's approach to other global security regimes, for example, nuclear posture. So what is the role played by nuclear posture here? It is only an, a comparison to show how India is clear with the nuclear policy, which is no first use, but not clear with the cyber policy. Is there any other role the word nuclear posture is playing here? No. Is that the central idea of the passage? No. It's only brought in to show a comparison. Why do we need a comparison? Because the author is building the argument that India needs more clarity and a better approach to deal with cybersecurity. So the role played by the word nuclear approach, etc., is only that of comparison. Any central idea that uses the word nuclear in it will be an incorrect option because this passage is not about nuclear uh, anything. The focus of the passage is also not to compare cyber and nuclear approach. Nuclear approach is only a very small sub point in the bigger picture. So is this passage about comparison of cyber security and nuclear security? No. It is only a small sub point. Don't confuse it. That means everything written is not the central theme. And this is what you have to do. You are building points. You skipped facts. You're only focusing on reading on points. 
and you realize this is just one small point naturally your mind will tell you boss this is not the central idea at all the central idea is the need to have a better clarity on cyber security so this is this that means any comparisons that are done as a small level a comparison will be a central theme when more than four five paragraphs are on the comparison but if there is a one paragraph one line on comparison then comparison is not the central theme of the passage so any comparisons done are done only to add to the bigger theme so i skip this so i've read this read this again the author is building up on the nuclear bit as you can see the author is building up on the nuclear bit is it fair to argue could secrecy and ambiguity surrounding a nation's doctrine so we read it these are the what is this part here these are questions which are are the actual questions or are they also points made by the author so this paragraph contains all these questions are the actual questions or are they points made by the author so they are points made by the author very good some of you are already answering so they are simple points made by the author they are not actual questions and therefore these are called rhetorical questions therefore these are called rhetorical questions so they are not questions that the author wants you to answer they are questions the author wants you to think about questions for which answers are asked are actual questions questions which are thought provoking are rhetorical questions have you got this point questions for which answers are asked are actual questions questions for which which are thought provoking written towards the end of the passage after the author has made all the points are called rhetorical questions so with these rhetorical questions the author tries to end the passage and builds the point on having a better approach or strategy towards cyber security i would like to draw your attention to one last small passage why uh, this passage actually as you can see the kremlin's buzz buzzword now is russia looking east russia looking east means russia going away from europe now why do i want you to uh, focus on this uh, passage i'll just show you now some passages come with a history so look at the smaller i uh, this thing here the greater europe concept has gone with the emphasis on russia's sovereignty and independence so russia wants to be sovereign and independent so again this is the attractive a title and this is giving us the central theme that means this passage is going to talk about how russia wants to deal more with its sovereignty and independence and probably this passage will give reasons of why that is happening right so let me just enlarge this a little bit and i just want to show you some passages with come with a baggage what do i mean by that so i start reading about this some back drop history russia's foreign minister declared last month that although the eu was russia's biggest trading and investment partner moscow was ready to break the ties right so okay now we are beginning to talk about why uh, russia is more about independence and uh, sovereignty why did that happen because the eu criticized them <coughs> for jailing the opposition minister navalny so navalny has been in news if again if you have been reading the news you will 
uh, have an idea about it. Now this passage to discuss this current situation will move into a little bit of history. Right? <clears throat> so he added, so we read, he added something, right? Uh, the Kremlin later mitigated. Mitigated means the foreign minister was very, very adamant and aggressive. So they mitigated this approach about severance of ties with EU and look at this. <clears throat> now mitigated it by saying that no, we are not going to break away from the EU. However, now those suggest the approach of the Russian ministry. We are not looking at doing it. So the foreign minister said we will break ties because of criticism. The criminal said, no, no, that's the, the minister didn't mean it. Those suggest that we might consider it if the EU continues to sanction us in sensitive areas of the economy. So now this current thing has been put in front of you. The current thing has two, three twists. This is only informative. Right now, the author has not said anything about what is the situation currently with uh, this Russian thing. So this first paragraph has only given us a backdrop history. What the minister said, what the Kremlin said, and finally, the approach of the Kremlin. Now, the author starts analyzing it. So this passage uh, or this editorial article has got a <clears throat> couple of things the first portion of the passage is talking about the current situation and is only informative in nature. That means when we talk about tones, different parts of the passage can have different tones. So the first part of this passage that we have just read has got an informative tone. It's only sharing facts with us. The second part now will delve into history. So this is the baggage part. Now the author gives us some history. You know, the Ural Mountains, the geography has been described here. If your geography is poor, you may not be able to visualize it. That means in certain passages, which delve into certain histories to explain current situations, if I am not well versed with history or geography, my understanding may be a little bit hazy. Now, if I don't know the length and breadth of what Europe and Russia look like, right? What are, where are the Ural Mountains? I may have difficulty in envisaging what the point is over here. And you know, this history goes on and uh, you are told that the French president also had this idea of a common Europe, <clears throat> Gorbachev, Yeltsin. So we are going into history. Then there are references to Cold War. <clears throat> look at this. Uh, but his commitment to refashion Russia after the European model failed to result in the inclusion of Russia and European security or political architecture or the removal of Cold War tensions. Now, this reference to Cold War, to the whole European Union structure, Russia is included, not included. This, if you are not aware of, you will lose interest in the article. And you will lose interest because of your lack of understanding of the article. Now, when you are reading such articles, these may be a part of your question paper. What is suggested is that you pick up these keywords, Cold War or uh, European Union in the time of Boris Yeltsin or Gorbachev and Cold War and try to go further back, read some online articles to get an insight. It is a time taking process, but it is worth it. This is how you will build your bandwidth of reading. This is how you will build your confidence of reading. But because if you have some idea of what is happening here, why Yelstein has been mentioned, why Gorbachev has been mentioned, what was the Cold War, was Russia ever included in the European Union architectures? You know, then your understanding is clear. 
even if you have basic understanding then at least your article understanding is clear but if you have no knowledge of all this then this is where you will stop reading and you will lose interest in this article right so what is suggested is those of you who have more time right now have exams a little later on or further what is suggested is you pick up some of these keywords you do a little bit of background reading get some insight and then continue now let me bring your attention to the author's voice <clears throat> the author voice the author's voice comes from here oh ho oh, one minute the author's voice comes from here this is what the author believes that the eu's attitude was never sustainable sustainable to whom to russia since it rested on sovereign inequality now look at how the author is talking the author says that eu believes whatever it is doing democracy was advanced when the west assumed the right to promote liberal values in russian civil society that means the eu believes that whatever it was doing was democratic whatever russia was doing was never democratic but look at this but but democracy was under attack when russia attempted to influence the west so why is russia going to fail in eu the author believes russia is going to fail in eu because of eu's attitude this is what this it's saying that whenever they wanted to uh tell russia to be democratic they were fine but whenever russia wanted to interfere anywhere whether it's eu or america they were made the villains so this approach shows that the author is not biased against russia very big re revelation and that the author is writing on behalf of what eu or russia what is the author writing on behalf of great that means the author is writing on behalf of russia so if i get questions like what is true as per the passage any option that shows that the author is on the side of russia will be true any option that shows that the author is on the side of eu will be false so not just a central theme statement whose side the author is on author is biased towards whom biased against whom all these are tested in these question types now whether you knew the history of ural mountains or not was actually not important why i'm saying that you would have left the article was because you would have felt that history is important it may make certain portions of the article hazy for you but you will not miss these points if you pay attention here so without understanding the history of the geography of russia and uh, russia's uh, earlier engagement with you can you understand this part that the author is biased in favor of russia so that means if there are certain portions in the passage that i am not sure of not because i haven't understood them but because i don't know the history i can still continue to read and continue to gauge these things like whether the author is on this side or on that side what tone of the author is and what are the main points that the author is making the author's history the, the history that the author has given i haven't understood much but never mind what the author is saying further i will be able to understand so can i skip certain portions in the passage that i haven't understood no, because of references yes i can skip those can i still understand the central theme of the passage the attitude of the author the mood of the author yes so let's go on with that spirit giving up there was not a good idea you could have done a background reading that's only for your added information but even if you did not do the background reading all this is easily understood right <clears throat> so i hope that these basic things were clear to all of you today and uh, we can actually do two articles what they are talking about the kind of questions we can actually do it like a regular feature if you would like us to do that please say so in the chat box 
right? If you would like to do uh, us to do a feature, please do put in your views in the chat box. Uh, if you're watching us live on YouTube, please do that. We can discuss two articles, if not on a daily basis, but at least twice a week basis. Pick up the articles, discuss the author's attitude, tone, central theme. Right, so please do tell us, and uh, we would love to include this as a feature in our daily learning. And hopefully it will promote reading and, uh, you know, learning and growing together. So thank you so much for your time, everyone. And uh, after getting your feedback, I would like to make this a regular feature in our uh, curriculum. You're already doing GK through the newspaper Hindu analysis. We can take up different newspaper articles, different article types, and discuss them also in during the week. So uh, newspaper reading, uh, I would suggest that you spend at least three days a week and give it around half an hour to 45 minutes. All those who have more time and have papers to write later in uh, next year, et cetera, should give more time to newspaper reading and focus on at least the uh, news articles, which is the front page, national news, world news, and editorial articles. Sports, of course, many of you are uh, already following. So these four to five pages you should definitely read. Right? And some people will have a faster reading speed, some not. And as I said, in, on the front page, if you're already following a certain news article, you needn't read the article in detail. You can just read the topical sentences that will increase your newspaper reading. Some news articles that you actually have to read and gauge information, you can again skim and write down the keywords and the points for GK. More of the time that you will spend in reading would be editorial articles. That should take about half an hour, depending on your reading speed. Right? So I'm just giving you minimum, minimum thrice a week I'm saying should be done because it will really build your reading momentum. Yes, so Indian Express is also a great newspaper. We can look at Indian Express articles in the next class. Great guys, thank you so much. I love doing this session with you all and I'm going to, yes, print is great, scroll is great, wire is great. We can take uh, different newspapers in our reading. Great, have a great day ahead.